Hello and welcome to Feral Plays Total War Three Kingdoms on Mac OS. I'm your host Sam and with me is Alex from our QA team. Hi. So let's jump straight in. Okay. So oh, here we are. Here we are. Where um, now, now at the, so this is the start of the game. Fancy UI. Um, the, the game, uh, at the start of the game, the game normally gives you some pointers of like things that you can be doing. And typically speaking as well, uh, Gong Gong's son Zan. Yep. I'm thinking of pronouncing it correctly. Um, this this is actually pays homage again back to. The I mean, novel. you're looking at me like I know how well. it's pronounced, but. <laughs> but this, this is a uh, pays back uh, to the novels where within uh, the novels Yuan Shao and Gong Song San actually have rivalry between each right, other. Right. Okay. So uh, throughout the game. Um, there are dilemmas that make a return, so there will be a tied in law that users will be able to like read into as they're playing the game. So we're given our first objective to crush the following army in battle, which would be this guy right here. So we'll get started with that. Poor guy, doesn't even know what's about to happen. Destroy Absolutely. The but like again, we it's quite nice. We've got some like extra like um, options to like sort of like have a look at like different details about like uh, what your chances are within the battle and the map view makes another return. That's quite nice. I like that. So at least you get an idea of the yeah. terrain that you're looking at and absolutely being able to sort of figure out if you know is this a really is this a good battle or is this a bad battle? Like you know, yes. do I really want to be fighting this? You can or? sort of make some yeah. decisions about like what your odds are depending on the, uh, the, the terrain. So we will go ahead and jump into this. And what we'll do with Yuan Shao and his cavalry, we'll send them off to the side and have them move through the forest to flank around, while the rest of everyone meets them in the middle. Victory in Get battle, this battle is achieved underway. by routing or destroying all enemies. Are moving. Break them around everyone to seize forward. victory. One of the things I absolutely love is um, if you watch closely on the infantry units, is when they actually charge. Uh, or even even when they move forward, oh, they move yeah. forward like individually. So before they would all move as one unison like unit, whereas now you can actually see them individually like spreading out, and it makes the charges look so much like so cinematic. Oh, yeah. It's, it's oh, yeah. incredible. There's a, a lot of like love yeah. put into the feel. I love all the little flags as well. When they start battling, they yeah, and the flags in the ground, and then you just yes. see this, you see this, like, absolute slaughter take place, and then you just, afterwards, like, you see all the bodies and just the flags sticking out, and you're just like, what happened to all these guys? So here, we have been initiated a duel challenge, which we are going to accept. I so what will happen you. is the two characters now will meet each other in Your the field and will draw. No one else can interfere with this, but you they can, troops you can choose presence. to interfere, but it's considered dishonourable, and you'll be given consequences for doing so. Right. So okay. Preferably, you <laughs> want them to fight it out, but you want to win as yeah. well. So while they're going to be fighting, we are going to be moving around them to engage. But they haven't caught wind of us here, which is good. We'll move these guys a bit closer. Another thing to also just check if you have any other active abilities on your heroes, you can use them in the duels, which do play an effect. Right, okay. But the two different types of general types here is we have a champion type general who is ideal for dueling. But we also he's also up against a sentinel who's actually also kind of really good for dueling too. Sentinels can are designed to survive the longest in right, fights, okay. while champions are designed to do, do a lot of damage. Now the fighting has begun here. We'll get a closer look at the charge. Oh! Oh, beans. Now while that's happening, we can get the cavalry down to go and deal with the archers. They had not seen Flanking, as always, is a perfectly one of the best strategies you can do by encircling your opponents. Get these guys to move around the back. 
And these guys, I think they're probably going to be fighting each other to the death, but it looks like we're doing okay. Here come the cavalry. So even though there aren't as many cavalry, only 42 group, they do a lot of damage. Yeah. These these guys were 120, and now down to 20. <laughs> <laughs> Just in one charge. So it's brutal. But I think the archers helped a little as well. Oh, oh yeah, they, they did. I have to admit the archers are surprisingly effective in this as well. Like I, I was not expecting to see the like the if you get if you get enough archers together, they really do turn the tide. Yes. I, I, one of my favourite tactics is to have an, like, enough archers just to be Surely able to like start pummeling just one unit and then just like systematically destroy the, the units as they go up the line, and it it works so well in this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, there we go. Fantastic. The that puts won. us into victory. I don't think any of them can. You absolute savage. False <laughs> <laughs> <Both> victory. <Yeah. laughs> oh, is it, oh, is it close? Oh, that's all right then. You can be forgiven for slaughtering them all. Is that is that how we justify it now? It, it, was it was a close victory, so it's okay. Yes. So I'm allowed to kill all of them. Of that's, course, it's perfectly legitimate. Of course. Seventeen survived. You spared all but seventeen. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Ah, you're a nice guy. It's yeah, all right. it's all right. You're a nice guy now. It's fine. Seventeen. Seventeen's fine. As long as one lives, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, military supplies makes a return. So this will be something to be for users to be aware of when they're in enemy territory. But you might not want to spend too long away from home. Yeah. But in this case, we've taken some. Very few losses, really, so we won't need to worry about replenishment. Instead, we'll get a little bit extra I don't income. Think we need them. That gives us our first um, first reward, which gives us extra supplies and extra morale for our troops. Very nice. Now, we're given another objective. Take this farmland. Luckily for us, I think oh, we're in a good position to move on straight away and head straight into... The first town battle. Charge towards it. So it doesn't favour us too much, but it does say we will we'll win decisively. It was never in doubt. So again, nice bits of information to sort of like read up on. We've got uh, faction support is a new thing. Okay. So faction support will uh, basically determine uh, the village or town's uh, support for your faction. This affects uh, income and public order for the town. This will raise every turn uh, a set amount. So after a certain amount of turns, they will be loyal to you. Right, and okay. it will start operating uh, correctly. Population, this is a old feature that used to be within older Total Wars, which has now returned. Uh, population also plays a part in the, the income and public order of the towns. So I'm sure a lot of people are, would be pretty happy to see this make a return. Yeah. Um, as part of uh, Yuan Shao, this is an option unique to Yuan Shao. He can use his uh, lineage that he earns through game to basically allow him to get extra replenishments for the garrisons and also for his own army and increase uh, faction support more quickly. Right, so okay. we will go ahead, ahead with this. It's definitely worth it, yeah. It allows uh, the town to function more properly quickly, which could allow Yuan Shao to potentially um, allow him to expand rapidly in very quick uh, succession and accordingly. So now we're given another um, objective to construct a building within the starting town that we have. So um, every town has a number of slots depending on the size of it. So we open up the building menu, we can upgrade all the way to an imperial city if we want to. Nice. Though one thing to take note of um, is is the cost. There's the cost. The cost, is, <laughs> cost is very high. Very also, expensive. Also, food distribution. Wow. Okay. So, this may be a bit, a bit of a, a, yeah. a pro tip for a lot of users. It may not be a good idea to keep upgrading all your towns. 
as uh, into cities as uh, uh, all at once because you may find a food shortage. Yes. So it may be an idea to specialise some areas to be imperial cities, but other areas not to. Right. Okay. Which will present a more unique challenge to users in this uh, in three kingdoms. And you see, that explains why when I played it, I ran out of food. Yes. Because I was focusing, I was like, yep, upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. And then I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't capturing enough farms. And then I basically found that I was, yeah, just completely ran out of food. So in this case, we do have a building that is a land registry office, which is producing some food. And we also do have a grain farm, which is also producing food. So as part of the building change that support agricultural buildings, government support allows us to increase our food production, but also increase uh, the peasantry income and give us some other buffs as well. Right, okay. So we will go ahead with this option. Now, another thing to notice quickly here, you can only do one construction at a time. You can't chain all your buildings to be built at once within the same province. So planning accordingly will also be quite vital when moving forward with towns, particularly when you capture a new area that hasn't been developed. So this also presents a more strategic forward-thinking uh, planning for users in free. So after that, we are presented with a lot of options to do now, so we can end the first turn. You notice here, we have reform. So this is a different take on the research tree. And this is one of the things I love it, it's the, it's the technology tree. It's the but it's a tree! <laughs> it's, it's an tree. actual tree! It's brilliant, I love it. So within this, every five turns, uh, you will be given an option, a choice to choose a different reform. These are permanent uh, changes to your faction as you progress through the campaign. You can look at what every single one does before you choose them. So you will be able to plan ahead and it will let you know which other uh, reforms you will need to pick before you can unlock the one you're looking at. So it allows you to be able to plan which ones you want to go for. One, one thing to quickly note when we uh, selected the four envoys, as you uh, progress up um, uh, the, the different branches, you'll notice that the branches will grow. And eventually, when you fill out the entire tree, it will be filled with all pretty flowers. Something very pretty it's to look very at. Very nice. The best looking technology tree I've ever seen. <laughs> okay. For peace. Our first city siege battle. We can choose to either wait them out and starve them, but Heaven smiles upon us. <laughs> again, no pressure. Again, no pressure. <laughs> Move out quickly. Very scary sight to see that many arrows coming towards us. Yeah, <laughs> but it is inevitable. You will take some losses, so you will have to sort of say goodbye. To or a lot in these guys' cases. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily they do have shields, which does give them some protection against the arrow fire. Much better than the spear infantry who won't have shields. Yeah. But luckily for us it is the best side because the archer towers are gone. So it does give us the best possible option of siege in this location. But we will have to see how it all plays out. We are in place at the walls! Got our first lot, making the climb up the wall. Brave, brave soldiers. Soon as we get. <laughs> they give us the necessary time needed to get through. Oh, in this case. Oh, they decided. It actually looks they like they, are, they don't care about the battering ram. No. They are just going for it. Looks like they are rallying now. But we have actually managed to also reach through the gate at the same time, so we will get people to move in. And our general, his horse, can actually join us in the fight because these are spear guys. That's a lot of his horse. We'll activate his ability to give us some protection from Archer Fire. Which in this time really makes a big difference. Oh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. With this many archers, it really does make a difference. They think they're safe behind their walls. They think they do. They think they are. But they'll soon come back. You are pitiful! 
not holding very well, but the Spear Guardians in this game are known for being quite resilient. They will be a bit tough to break through. But we'll see if we can get some guys to get around them a little bit. Oh, we do have some units in already. Barricades make a return. So you do have to watch out for these as an attacker, because you'll have to make a decision of spending the time to break down the barricades or going round them. Yuan Shao is getting very deep within the fight, way further ahead of his guys. <laughs> Sort of leading the charge, but a little bit too enthusiastic. Though. Yeah. Yeah. But he's a tough character. He won't be so easy to take down. We'll have these guys join them up on the wall. The time you fight has like a dairy farmer. How appropriate! You fight the like a cow! one thing to note. Strategists cannot be jeweled with. Okay. The strategists are not predominantly fighters. They are. They do play more of a supportive role. They normally come with abilities to give much so larger buffs to infantry, or uh, provide penalties to your own. So they aren't very good for we sending them to the fight. They are better to keep back tower. and act as a support and inspiration okay. for your troops. Our archers have run out of ammunition, so that means they will be joining us in the fight. They won't do a, a great job at fighting, but they are extra They make up for numbers. They make yeah. up for the extra numbers. Definitely try to hold this. This is a another improvement over the part of like people will notice with AI. That they will do things to try and slow you down. So particularly at this point, they are trying to hold us in a small choke point to stop us from getting through so quickly, which is a very it nice thing to see and very uh, clever. Warrior. Yeah, very clever because it, you know it's some god to undo. <laughs> which damn them for thinking of it first. Yeah, damn yeah. them for thinking of it first because it does mean our little excavation of the wall is struggling. Our axe man are struggling a little bit by getting kind of the fight. We are slowly pushing through, but it does mean we are taking some pretty serious losses. Yeah. But you're gaining ground, but they are making you pay for it. Yes. The enemy warriors are and I say you because I'm not I'm not putting we in this, I'm not no. you know, I'm, you know, I'm just letting I'm letting you take all the blame for this. When we win it's we, but when we lose it's oh, you. Yeah, right, of yeah, course, that's, that's, of course, that, that's of how course. it is, that's how it works. So the archer towers can also be captured and taken away from control of the enemy, which will be a good idea. These do act as other choke points for uh, the defenders to use against you. Looks like we did manage to win that one out. Eric victory. Oh. Pretty nasty losses yeah. on both sides. Definitely the archer, uh, definitely their archers were doing a, a lot of damage there. Yes, they were. They do have been racking up some. Oh, managed to pull through. Didn't do him any good. Those who cross me know death. Again, bigger rewards, and we still have enough lineage. Though capturing lar the larger the cities get, the more lineage it is going to cost you. Okay. So you may want to play, uh, try and think about when you want to use your lineage. We'll go for Occupy normally this time. For the better under my but we do have a reward to increase our lineage per turn. Now, to can't go over the lineage quickly. So, lineage, when it's... Uh, you have different three different stages of lineage. So, when it's on its lower stage, you don't get any buffs. But as it increases, you get increased replenishment and reduced recruitment costs for your captains. So, this... So, increasing your lineage to be higher will also be good. But as you increase it, you will be given larger lineage decays. So the ways of increasing the, uh, your lineage is uh, Yuran Shao has a special building called the Yuran Administration Office, which as you increase will start providing you with lineage along with other buffs for yourself. 
So users playing as Yuan Chao will want to make sure they have some um, Yuan administration offices placed within their settlements. Okay, so we managed to get hold of that city. So, some of the other things we briefly mentioned about, which is the openings of different positions. These positions will open up as your faction, as your uh, leader ranks up for his faction. So we have the position of Chancellor open. So we'll have a look at putting someone in control. So someone in the position of Chancellor gives you a load of position effects. But again, character defection will trigger civil war. So right, okay. whoever you put, keep a close eye on them. Make sure they're happy. We'll give this guy a go. He's happy seems trustworthy. Now. Yeah, he yeah. seems all right. Yeah. Seems okay. Yeah, like the helmet. So now, administrator. Now, administrators, you may want to have a look through who you've got because you're given a few position effects, which are the same for everyone, mm -hmm. but then you're given administrator effects from that character. So this guy, uh, Zhu Yu, will give us two plus in public order, 10% for all sources of income. 7% decrease in construction costs and 2,000 population growth. Very nice. Whereas uh, Lady Liu, hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly, <laughs> uh, will give us minus 25% building upkeep, 1,000 population and 9% construction costs. Again, for every character, these will be different. So, administrators, you will assign to a province. So, depending on the province you choose, you may want to pick a particular character more than anyone else. But I think from this choice, choice, our first option it looks like is he's probably the best one, our yeah. best option. Another thing to note is the satisfaction increase. He won't be more satisfied at his position. I mean, he should, he should be. Yeah, he should be. I mean, we're being nice. We are I mean. being nice. He's given a position of power. But he does give us some pretty good bonuses. So he is our best choice. So, in this case now, we now need to pick an area for him to administer in. So, in this case, we will probably go and pick Anping. It's giving us the biggest income at the moment, and he does come with the 10% increase in all sources. Right. So, this would make the best sense. And because it's already a soul city, probably best to build up quicker anyway. So, along with our confederacy, we have noticed we've gained some extra armies, but... Our income's a little bit too low at the Serve moment. The we'll probably have a look at what we're calling Han Fu himself, who's joined you us. Me a kindness in calling. As uh, our, as uh, characters are recalled, you will be able to recall them again. So in this instance, we can't get him back just yet, but after the next turn, we will be able to recall him to this army. Again, this is very useful for players who might want to move characters around the map yeah, very quickly yeah. rather than travelling. So, a lot of people may appreciate this. Um, so, yeah. Now we've got a slightly bigger increase in our faction, but now we've opened ourselves up to more opportunities of being attacked. The Han Empire will always be against you. Because it is being here. Uh, so, the reason why for that is sort of explained during the introduction. So, Dong Zhuo has got the capital of Chang'an, where the emperor resides, the current emperor resides. Right, okay. So, as it says here, if we were to be able to go over and take the city, we would gain control of the emperor and gain, then also gain control in turn of turning the Han Empire into our vassal, which will make them our allies which could give us a very powerful ally. So, so would that be a worth would that be a worthy goal to to try and attack oh yeah. like at this point now would it be worth sending an army over there. It may, you may be able to do it because we do have access to the river. The river does allow us to well the river will allow you to quickly travel down. Though the one thing to also take care your military supplies. Right. So you may have to try and gauge whether it's worth traveling so far to get over here or whether you should consider expanding over first to get closer before sending out an expedition and a campaign to take the city so there's a lot of a uh, 
You might want to do it now, but you need to plan ahead for it. Right, gotcha. So it will be a case of you need to choose the right characters, have the right army, and the right timing to do it. I right, gotcha. Because uh, the season also plays an event. As you progress through turns, you may have noticed we may have gone through different seasons. I gone found winter to be a bit tricky. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> winter eats into your military supplies, so be careful when you decide to perform a siege, because if you do it at the wrong time, you may find you run out of supplies too quickly. Yeah. I suspect Jon Snow had the same problem. Oh, yes. In case anyone hasn't seen the latest yeah. episode yet. <laughs> okay, cool. So we are going to... Up the ante now, <laughs> After and, go, and go for the and go for the capital. We're going to see how it goes. So we will send Yuran Chao with his group already. He will still be in his territory at this point, so he will gain supplies still and gain some reinforcements. So this will even out for us at the end of the next turn. We are going to make a quick rush for it to see if we're very lucky and can take it. We are getting very close, but now we're starting to see the bigger effects of being in hostile territory. Oh, wow. So, it will be a bit of a gamble. I, have a request for you. I think for quite a few Total War players, I think you know what happens when you run out of military supplies. Yeah. <laughs> so, we bite the bullet here. Destroy the traitors. Does put us evenly matched. There was a much larger wow. garrison in here. We could face some trouble, but we don't have a lot of time because our supplies might run out. We're just going to have to play it by ear about how quickly our supplies fall down. Ideally, we want the best chance we can get out of the supplies we have, but instead, they're nope, going for us. They're coming for us. In this case, we might risk it with a delegation because it does look like we. Could, could win. just about win. Could just about. Let's risk it for a biscuit. We do Very come nice. out. We do come out. See, it was all skill there. It was all your skill. Absolutely. If you if you hadn't clicked on the button at that right time, then it would have you know could have gone the other way. Yeah, absolutely. So in this case, we are taking some larger losses. We will replenish our troops with what we can. You have provoked. Yeah, here we go. So now, now that we've successfully caught it. We now, the puppet uh, Han Emperor has been captured from Dong Zhuo to us, Yuan Shao. So, if we take a step back out of the map, we can see here now what used to be our enemy is now our vassal. And you can sort of find now we have a much larger increase in income. Very nice. Part of our 1,000 in, in tributations. That is thanks to our vassal. Luckily, because we have control of the, the Emperor, the Han Empire will never rebel against you. Right, okay. And the Emperor will now be moved into your capital. So be sure to protect your capital from being captured, otherwise you'll lose control of the Han. Definitely a solid idea. But it does put us into a much larger position now, into protecting this area for retaliation now surrounded by enemies. So we're going to stop it there. So thank you very much for watching. Please follow our social media channels and news feeds for more news about Total War Free Kingdoms. And we'll see you next time. Bye. See ya.